Another successful landing. <laughs> Are you doing greetings there? Hi. I have a, a self-appointed number one GFX fan on planet Earth, and certainly so on YouTube. Um, here in roughly uh, two weeks, uh, Fujifilm is going to announce uh, their new uh, GFX 100S. And uh, let me mention a few things about it. I'm actually excited to get my hands on uh, one to talk about it and show it to people. I am an owner of the GFX 50R and also, too, the GFX 100. I used to own a GFX 50S, great camera, I just didn't need three. Um, the GFX 50R is my favorite camera of all time, be it film or digital. It's absolutely everything that I want. Um, is it fast? No, and I absolutely do not give a hoot and heck about that fact. The new GFX 100S, as I said, to uh, cut down on uh, cost of uh, design and whatnot in the manufacture of the camera, and to make it the $6,000 price point that it is, I knew that this would be the case, that it will have the exact same a GFX 100 sensor, not only that, which of course we already knew, but also to the IBIS mech. So there's just one assembly for both cameras, and that saves money and saves time, and it does a lot of stuff. Um, I told you about uh, two weeks ago that the camera also, too, will not have a detachable EVF viewfinder like the GFX 50S, and also to the GFX 100. It'll have a fixed EVF viewfinder, just like the X-T4 does, or this, the X-S10. In essence, too, the proper way to look at the camera, and it will have no vertical grip capability like the GFX 100. The correct way to look at the GFX 100S is basically uh, the same uh, um, relationship between like the X-T30 and the X-T3, or this, the X-S10 versus the X-T4. Now, even though it's called the X-S10, this is essentially the X-T40. Obviously, the grip ergonomics are completely different, but, I mean, this is the X-T40. In other words, the simplified version of the X-T4 that we have here. So that's what the X100S is. Um, it's not going to have a fully articulating screen. Um, also, too, the battery is going to sit perpendicular to the body. Even though it's a much larger uh, battery um, than uh, is found in the X-T4, which is a completely new battery, by the way, of course, or that of the XS10, which is the old Fujifilm battery. You can call it old, but essentially, yeah, we could call it old. Um, but it's going to sit perpendicular to that. There's a reason for that. There's only so much room of well, what you could fit into a camera with IBIS. Now, you can do that on the X-T4, uh, which is a, a larger camera. Um, but to actually uh, fit that IBIS mech in there, the battery is going to be perpendicular to the camera body. And so, you know, if you kind of squint your eyes a little bit and hold the camera off at a distance. The XS, uh, the X, uh, GFX, excuse me, the GFX 100S will essentially be the same uh, body style as this, the uh, XS10. Is it going to be identical? No. Is it going to have the same dials? No, I'm not saying that. I'm actually saying the style of the body. I'm actually excited for that. So we're only about uh, two weeks away from the announcement. The camera should then, therefore, be available sometime in March. I won't speculate uh, when in March. I already had a lot of people tell me that at the $6,000 price point, with the fact that it has an IBIS, with the fact that it's the 102 megapixel backside illuminated uh, sensor, that an enormous amount of people are going to jump into it. The, the camera, too, will be, in essence, uh, the same size or smaller than a Nikon D850 or a Nikon D750, for example. So 102 megapixels of, uh, of a BSI IBIS medium format, no less. Um, I, I knew years ago when I was the first person to jump on the bandwagon for GFX. It's what I've been waiting for from any of these damn big camera companies like Canon and Nikon. Sony's not a camera company. They're a consumer electronics company. But anyway, the big folks like uh, Sony and Nikon didn't do it. The little small company, Fujifilm, did it. Not only that, they did it right. And they did it at the correct price point. And uh, all other medium format is, is an irrelevancy and an afterthought. Fujifilm dominates medium format digital. The only thing I do anymore is business photography. I recently just got two jobs to photograph interior, exterior businesses 
for their website. I love that work. It's so easy. You don't have to deal with brides. You don't have to, you deal with people, but not really. To them, it's a tax write-off. And, uh, you know, they're not crazy nitpicky um, like uh, a wedding shoot is. It's easy. And I, lo I don't know why more people don't do that. I, well, I, I do know why. It's because it's not glamorous. Everybody wants to take pictures of hot people. There's no money in taking pictures of hot people. Um, where the money is in photography is not glamorous at all. Um, people don't realize that. They think, you know, you're going to travel the world and take pictures of hot people, and that's why I'm going to have a camera. I'm a photographer. Travel the world and take pictures of hot people. That's all well and fine, and there are an extremely small number of people that do that, but anyway, that was off topic. Um, how excited are you? I've had a lot of people tell me that they're quite excited about the GFX 100S coming out at the $6,000 price point. A lot of people, no joke, have been telling me that this is what they're waiting for. They can't wait uh, for it to come out. And uh, I'm really excited too, and I already have that same sensor. Um, so essentially the camera is going to be, you know, the same relationship as the X-T20, X-T30, X-S10 is relationship to their bigger, fancier brothers, brethren, uh, like the X-T3, X-T4. And uh, simplified, not dumbed down, but simplified, no vertical grip, uh, no uh, detachable EVF with a tilt swivel adapter, um, no vertical grip shutter release, obviously so. Um, simplified as far as uh, video capabilities. However, it actually should be as good as the GFX 100 is, which I also do happen to own. People also, too, ask me why, even though I have the GFX 100, why the 50R is my favorite camera of all time rather than my GFX 100. Well, the GFX 100 obviously performs better in low light than the same sensor in the 50S and 50R. It has more capabilities, faster autofocus, on and on and on. But and that's all wonderful, and I appreciate it, but I, I really don't care. Um, that uh, $3,500 plus, depending on whether it's on sale or not, price point in the GFX 50R is incredible. What it does and what it is, it's a simple brick that takes incredible freaking pictures. People say, there's an old sensor in that camera, because that sensor was used for many, many years prior to the GFX 50S and 50R's introduction. It's like, yeah, I know, but who gives a damn? Um, Sensor in the Nikon D4, D4S have been around for ages. Nobody that uses those cameras gives a hoot either because they're incredible. The image output's incredible. Doesn't matter that the low light performance is not as good. Um, medium format, nine times out of 10, is used under strict studio conditions. I say nine times out of 10. Well, I mean, now people are using it more for walking around ambient illumination because they're affordable now. But medium format has always been not necessarily a house cat or studio camera, but used by those folks that know how the heck to control their lighting conditions. So low light uh, image output is not important on medium format, nowhere near, nothing even close. Stands alone and apart from that of full frame and crop sensor and everything else. So, Let me know if you're excited about the GFX 100S. I certainly know that I am. And uh, Fujifilm doesn't sponsor me. I'm not connected with that company, but I'm more impressed by Fujifilm than I have ever been by any other camera company throughout all of uh, the history of me messing with cameras, which has been since I was a little, little rug rat. Not a rug. Well, yeah, almost a rug rat. I think my first camera was the Shika Mat 124G twin lens reflex medium format. I own several of those. Love that camera. Um, I've always been the biggest fan in the world of medium format. For many countless obvious reasons, the medium format difference is undeniable. There's not a single person on this earth that doesn't want a medium format digital. Everybody does. Even if, and I've said this before in another video, even if that's not the format that they use, like it's just a sports action or wildlife photographer, it doesn't need or medium format. Everybody wants a medium format camera, period. They do. It's not my opinion, that's a fact. And the people that rail against medium format are those that you know can't afford it or they're just you know living in a nutshell of their own delusions. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I can't wait now uh, for that camera to be announced and to come out. It should come out sometime in March. 
Thanks for watching, and wait for it. Fujifilm. I'm going to head to Florida next week sometime. I'm going to take one camera with me, my GFX camera. Well, no, I'm going to take my X-T4, actually, also. I take that back. I take my GFX 100. I'm going to take my... i probably just take my GFX 50R. Why don't you take your 100 megapixel camera? Why? If you can't crucify the shot of composition with 51 megapixels in medium format, you can't do it with 102 megapixels in medium format. Anyway, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Do 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 do